I've been told if you invest in the stock market, you will become rich in 30 years. So naturally by clicking this video, you kind of want things to happen a bit sooner. When we look at the way the world is moving, there is a wave of wealth that is coming. And if there was any opportunity to turn a thousand dollars into life-changing money, it would be in this transformational wealth period, right? So with that in mind, if I started again, and I had only a thousand dollars, this is what I would do with it. And before I get into the three areas that I would invest in, the most important thing for you to understand here is that every person is different. I am only speaking in this video based on my own risk tolerance. And if you actually remember in this car, in this very car, I made a video ages ago about how I personally, with a family, I'm willing to lose everything to get what I want. I'm in this market to change my life and my family's life and my family's family's life. I'm willing to risk it all. My risk tolerance is kind of a little bit crazy. Some of you may be there, some of you won't be. There's lots of factors in there. Naturally, you might have more risk tolerance or you might just be older and have less desire to take on risk because you're kind of closer to the moment where you're leaving work. It's all different. It's all okay. You don't have to assume risk to be the cool guy. This is purely from my own situation and should not be construed as financial advice. Now that we're clear on that, let's get to number one. So the absolute first thing I would do I'm kind of also assuming that if you've got a thousand dollars and that's the total amount of your portfolio, that you're probably on the newer side of crypto. And so where I would put $60 of my $1,000, that's 6%, would be straight into learning. Now this could be spread over different communities and learning in different communities. But if you find a good one, for example, that's maybe $5 a month, for example, Using that $60 to buy a year's worth of education and community and understanding and the ability to ask any questions you have and have them answered, that's a really valuable way to use your $60. And I know lots of people will be thinking, oh, that's such a boring answer. <laughs> Dedicating money to go and learn as the priority. I wouldn't say it's the priority in this situation, but certainly it's gonna put you in a position where you can determine what's real and what's not, what's a scam and what's not. And these are really important things for longevity in this space. If you don't know those things and you get scammed because you had no one to ask, then you're less likely to come back and actually invest the full amount of that 1,000. And therefore, you won't get the benefits or reap the rewards of the massive change that's gonna happen, the big financial system change. And so the self-learning thing comes in for me at a risk scale of one out of 10. Like there's basically no risk in learning for yourself. And this goes for anything, even outside of crypto, of course. So investment number two is XDC. What's really interesting about XDC is that it's all smart contracts. So when you look at this new system and how interconnected everything is going to be on the blockchain, what you realize is that there's actually a group of assets that are already kind of, they're in position for the switchover. How we understand this is that these tokens that are in that kind of basket of tokens are all ready because they're standardized using the traditional systems standardization codes. That code is, I or that standard is ISO 20022. Again, if you're new, that you've got to search that because that really narrows down the tokens that you should really be focused on. Because if you're looking at Shiba Inu or Doge and all of that kind of stuff, the meme coins, that's a lottery ticket that you're hoping for there. And that obviously has made lots of millionaires before. But on the more secure side, the, the risk off side, you want to look at the projects that are in position to be there when everything rises, when the flood comes in. You want to be in the assets that were ready beforehand and not the ones trying to climb their way to the surface. These assets that fall within this group, and you can interchange XDC with them. I'm just, I'll give you my rationale for XDC in a second. But you can have Algorand, IOTA, HBAR, XLM, Quant. Any of those really could be interchanged in this position. And I would be allocating 14% of my portfolio to one of those assets in there. The reason I have chosen XDC for this scenario for a thousand is because interestingly, XDC operates on a kind of counterintuitive way. Lots of times when all the prices of the assets are going up, XDC goes down. And when assets go down, XDC goes up. Very interesting. And actually, most people don't know this, 
the one asset that I've taken most profit in is XDC. I take advantage of those pumps in XDC when everything kind of goes down or stays flat. XDC is pumped for me. I mean, the first time I took profit with XDC this year was a 70% profit. And I took some off the table and bought back down when it came back down. And I'll continue to do that with XDC. It just has this weird characteristic that you can play that kind of buy and sell against the rest of the market that has worked really well in my favor and I've made lots of money that way. I also believe that XDC in the long term has tremendous potential. Massive price appreciation is possible for XDC as well. And that's why even a small allocation of 14%, for example, could still turn into tens of thousands of dollars just from its potential of its capital appreciation over time with utility. So while I'm happy for you to interchange any of those ISO 20022 assets in this number two spot, XDC takes it for me. I would say next down on the list would probably be Quant. Next down on the list after that would probably be HBAR. And then the other ones kind of blur together for me at the bottom. Now, many of you who understand the ISO 20022 space will be asking me, why not XLM? And that's a great question. For me personally, I want to cover different elements of the blockchain, different, different markets. So for example, you've got XDC that does smart contracts. I might want to focus on smart contracts and have a little allocation. But if there was another asset within the ISO 20022 asset range, it wouldn't be the best idea to buy another token that handles smart contracts because you want to kind of diversify within a very niche crowd. There's only six or seven assets in this ISO sphere and they all cover different elements. And the reason I don't go with XLM is for that reason. And it's because investment three, for me personally, is XRP. Now, because my risk tolerance is so incredibly high, I'm so willing to risk things. XRP, if I had $1,000, XRP would take $800 of that. That's 80% of the portfolio at $1,000 that I would have in XRP. This comes from a range of different reasons, right? One, my risk tolerance is very high. Number two is also because I think one of the biggest failings in quotes in, in the cryptocurrency or investing quote sphere is you need to diversify. I think that is terrible advice. It's fantastic advice if you're a millionaire or a billionaire because diversifying allows you to protect the wealth. But you ask any of those billionaires and millionaires if they diversified when they were younger or when they made that switch over from a normal person to a wealthy person, that never happens without risk. You have to assume risk in order to do that and then you protect. So you start by assuming risk, you, you get that moment, you ride that wave until you make it and then you diversify to protect your assets. This is when you buy properties, when you buy collectibles, when you buy artwork, you know, when you invest into multiple different projects and you've got a portfolio that's like 100 tokens strong or something. But there's been so many times and so many occasions where I've seen people with $1,000 portfolios spread across like 20 tokens. How are any of those tokens going to get you to where you want to go? You have to consolidate. Now, I think consolidating into two tokens is probably the ideal for $1,000. Again, just my opinion. But the vast majority of that, in my opinion, goes to XRP just because of the level of conviction, the level of research I've done. I can't imagine a world where Ripple doesn't succeed and the XRP token underneath it that, that runs as the lifeblood, as the heart of Ripple and of the XRP ledger doesn't appreciate with its demand. I can't imagine a world where that does that. The problem is if you diversify, just to go back to that, if you 10x three of the tokens and let's say you've got $1,000, just let's start from $1,000 and you put $100 into 10 tokens and three of them 10x, which actually probably 20 to 30% of like a random guess asset would probably be the ones to appreciate. The other ones would basically go to zero. You started with a thousand and you've ended up with three grand. Now that might be fine and that might be okay for your goals, but I'm not here for three grand. I'm here for 30 million. <laughs> like, like I'm not, I, I need to risk on so that I can risk off later. There's no point in me risk offing now with a thousand dollars. Now everyone in the world will tell you, you've got to diversify. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. But what is that actually going to achieve for you? You have to get insanely lucky what is that going to do for you? It's, like, it's mostly impossible to get to where you want to go by diversifying with such a small number. Now, like I said, none of this is financial advice, but if you do want to do your own research, and I suggest you do, don't worry about Bitcoin. Don't worry about Ethereum. 
focus on these ISO 20022 tokens. That's my unprofessional advice. It just will allow you to focus more on what probably is gonna be more important later down the line. And it will just, instead of looking at 3000 tokens that exist, you know, you're looking at seven that have real utility. I just think that's a valuable piece of advice. It's not financial advice, it's just like research advice. Okay, let's take it like that. Now, something else that is absolutely free that you can do with a low portfolio and a high risk portfolio is assume no emotion. Don't take your actions based on emotional feelings. If you're ever gonna do something emotionally, take a step back, have a few deep breaths, think about whether that emotion is rational, whether it serves your direction, your goals. And if it doesn't, don't do it. If it does, then do do it. But taking those few minutes off before you make an emotional decision can save you lots of money and also make you lots of money. As someone who has high levels of emotion, it was actually really important for me to kind of create this motto called no emotion. I say at the end of every video, stay emotionless and I'll see you in the next one. But I wanted to take it further. I wanted to create clothing about this. And I did, I created No Emotion Clothing. And actually the second collection of No Emotion Clothing has just come out. You can go to the link in the description and actually have a look at the No Emotion designs and even potentially even get you some. What's really interesting is that the co-creator of XRP, my largest investment in this portfolio kind of overview for a thousand dollars, the creator of XRP has agreed that the shorts that I made and put on noemotion.com, link in the description, I can hand deliver them to him and all the profits from the No Emotion David Schwartz shorts on the website and the picture is right there, will go to the charity of David Schwartz's choice. So if you go over to No Emotion and you buy a pair of shorts, just know that the profits from those shorts will go to charity. It's a charitable event. Even more than that, on Monday at about 2 p.m., I'm gonna go live Hi, Editor Lee here. What Lewis is about to explain and what he meant to say was that it's happening on Tuesday. It's actually Tuesday, not Monday, Tuesday. I don't want to see it in the comments. What happened to the stream on Monday? It's Tuesday. Tuesday. Thanks. For one hour on YouTube, and I'm going to say this for one hour. David Schwartz Shorts. I'm gonna say it for a whole hour. All of the proceeds from that stream, the, the, the super chats, the donations, the purchases on the shorts, all of that will go to the charity of David Schwartz's choice. So make sure you turn up. If you don't believe I'm gonna say it for an hour, I thought an hour was child's play. I was gonna do it for like five hours, but I thought an hour, let's do it like that. Most people don't believe I'm actually gonna do it. So I guess you'll have to turn up and see. Stay emotionless and I'll see you in the next one.